All right, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of the Games and Graps podcast. My name is Sonny G, and I am delighted to be once again, after two years, joined <laughs> by Mike Herman of Retrosoft Studios. Mike, how are you, my friend? Good, Sonny. Time flies. Huh? Oh, time man, flies. time two years seriously ago. flies. Unbelievable. Was, yeah, um, we looked just the other day when the podcast released last time, and it was the 10th of February, 2019. <laughs> Oh my god! I know. Oh my it's, god! Wow! It's crazy, right? Yeah, we've taken our time, huh? Yeah, because when, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we spoke, it was like, yeah, we're gonna get the game out maybe, uh, you know, early next year, so yep. early 2020, and then yeah, that was the plan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a whirlwind! I mean, from then until now, the game has just sort of gone from this idea, you know, of recreating WrestleFest to now being this i don't know it's a it's a global f- sensation i would say people are like <laughs> really this now like excited honestly people are, are people cannot wait including me i mean um i can't wait to to just be able to carry this around with me on switch it's going to be amazing but i just want, I want to ask you how you're feeling now that this is finally you know due for release right. we're two days away at time of recording from the Steam release, how are you feeling? What's the what's the feeling inside of Mike Herman and the rest of the RetroSoft team at the minute? Nerve, <clears throat> nervousness. <laughs> you know, because yeah. you, you pour, I've poured so much of my time, you know, f- life into this project, and not that I need validation, but it'll be nice to have validation that people enjoy the game. I enjoy it, so I kind of won in that regard. I really do enjoy playing the game that I created uh, with the help of so many people. But, um, you know, there is nervousness that people will, recept- will be receptive to it and enjoy it as much as we, we, as good as we think it is. We hope other people share that as well. Um, so I'm definitely nervous about it. Every person I send a key to, um, I'm like, I, I hope they like it. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it's weird that I want that acceptance kind of, so to speak. Um but I, you know, I think we've done a really good job. Uh, I think people are really going to enjoy playing it. So I feel I'm at the same time I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I have played it and I love it. I think it's brilliant. Um, it's exactly it's exactly what I wanted from it. Like awesome. when I when I first like sort of saw the screens a couple of years back, I was I was you know it's exactly what I thought it was going to be at that point. Yeah, and that's that's really uh, that's great. It feels me, you know, I feel good inside hearing you say that because good. one of the things is with our marketing, we're we're conscious of we want to market what the game is going to be mm. and try to people who are following us and liking the progress, we want them to like the final product, the game when it comes out. So I think that's one of the things we were striving to do with our marketing is let's market the game that's going to come out. And hopefully if people follow us, they'll be really satisfied once they get it in their hands. Yeah. Um, and I think people will be super receptive to it. I mean, it's different to any other wrestling game that's out there right, right now. I mean, you know, there's, you've always got your two K's and, um, you know, that they've released the arcade, arcade arcade type game in battlegrounds. Yep. And then you've got uh, Wrestling Empire that Matt yep, Dickey Matt brought Dick. out recently. Yep. Um, but this is different to all of them. You know, it's it's yep. got a real old school feel. I mean, I've played WrestleFest fairly recently, and I do really love it. But um, this this is just it's just got a, a real special feeling about it. It's it's old school, but it feels new at the same time. Just right. the way that the moves are animated and the wrestlers that you've got in there. And it just feels like a, a really special package. I was telling the guys in our Discord server today that I felt like this was a really special package. And it's awesome. That um, I just you're love... making me feel good. You're making me feel good. Good. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, I'm a I'm a big wrestling fan, a big wrestling game fan. And when I was I was just playing it with a smile on my face. Not the first few matches because I was losing, <laughs> like and losing badly as well. I was like. Man, my, my health bar, I'm getting my ass kicked. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? But um, I took it down a couple of levels difficulty-wise, got used to the timing and the fact that you can't just go steaming in right. you know, straight away with your, your power moves. And um, you know, once you get used to it, 
and you, you you sort of understand that technical side of it. It's it's just so much fun. Yeah, that's great. So to hear. Yeah, and that was that was one of the things we were concerned a little bit with, because um, it's like I I'm I'm not the best because I've been playing it since its inception. So. I've gotten really good at it over every iteration that we've had. So we tried to dial back the difficulty enough where it was still challenging, but I, I kind of looked at it this way. When I went in into the eighties and nineties into the arcade, I got my butt kicked when I played a new game off the bat. I don't know how many losses I had in street fighter, for example, before yeah. I could win, beat the, the computer. And then once you do it, you win the first match almost every time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that we're trying to get that kind of arcadey difficulty level um, where if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get your butt kicked. But if you know what you're doing, it's you're going to have a lot of fun with it. And I think part of the fun is figuring out what you're doing, right? So yeah. um, we, we purposely didn't give everything away. Um, you're going to have to hunt for the special moves, kind of like hunting for fatalities in Mortal Kombat. Although we don't have, you know, the, the, con the key combinations aren't like that. It's a very simple key combination that you're already doing. But um, – but yeah, it's stuff like we kind of treated it like an arcade game, a really good arcade port to the consoles. Yeah, it, it and it most certainly feels that way as well. I mean, I think you know you, you mentioned about discovering the the special moves. Um, it's really about knowing the wrestler and yep. what they do. You know, so I was um, Johnny Retro in one of the matches I had earlier on, and I was like, okay, I'm going straight for Moonlight Drive here. So, you know, and I, I love, I just love the way that you've shoehorned people's like styles in there like john morrison's like doing like flips and stuff yep. and like when he does the kicks he's like doing the rotations on the kicks and it just it just looks great now with with the moves obviously you know you've not gone mocap right because obviously they're sp sprite characters basically yep, yep. but so how did you go about animating the moves especially obviously you know back in the day when wrestlefest came out they didn't really do flashy moves you, you did right, a suplex right. you did a body slam you only you had a, a handful of moves yeah. yeah uh so yeah it, me and myself and uh another gentleman on the team of wade from he's from australia um we were like super wrestle fest fans right yeah. so we started with we wanted to capture the style of wrestle fest uh, okay for the most part. So it was very important to get our character style. So we made some changes to stand out because we are different, you know, it's a sequel. So we want to make some changes. We were a little bit less cartoony, not much. If you put our sprites up against WrestleFest, they're very similar, but we like have five fingers instead of the three that the WrestleFest characters had. And yeah, we move a little less robotically than, than those did, but we want, we, it was important to us to get that style. So what we did was we ripped out moves from WrestleFest. We actually hacked an emulator to, to green screen WrestleFest in order to capture um, the original animations to get an idea of how they were built. So that was kind of our first step. And the then we took drive is almost exactly the same, yeah, right? Yeah, it's very close. So you'll yeah. notice a couple moves we did that on purpose. You'll see like Tommy Dreamer has the the stomach smash that uh, that Boss Man and uh, Sergeant Slaughter and Earthquake did where they, he kind of just goes in and sticks his stomach out. Yeah. At the people. And you'll see moves like we, we put in Jake's DDT, a very similar yeah, with with the the finger, finger move. Yeah. And we really wanted to pay homage to the original game. So all the characters have like one or two of the moves that are very similar to what they were in the original game. Yeah, I, I think I think that's important because, you know, there are going to be fans of WrestleFest that are going to they're going to take a look at this. Yeah. You know, it, because they they'll remember it from the arcades when they were younger and all that sort of stuff. So that, they'll be looking for similarities. But what you've done is you've 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 brought it into the modern era by you know giving giving the the guys more moves. Right. So like more moves for weak, uh, medium, and and strong. And I think I think that's really important, especially by today's standards. Um, right. Because. One of the common complaints about um, 2K Battlegrounds, for example, was um, lack of moves. And right. everybody's move sets was the same, and there was just not enough to keep people going back. But with this, I feel like there's enough there's enough going on in, in different parts of the ring. Yep. Not not just in the grapple, but different parts of the ring to, to keep people interested. And I think people are, are going to see a lot of stuff they've never seen before you know every almost every time that they go back 
Yeah, each each wrestler has distinct moves to go through. Now, definitely, we definitely repeat some. Like the of weak course. moves are are we have. Uh, I don't know what the number is, but we have, you know, a fewer amount of weak moves that we share. But as soon as you get into the medium ones, they start to get way more character specific with the medium. And then the strong are, are super, uh, super specific uh, to to each of the wrestlers. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot, a lot of move variety. And that's one of the things that we even want to add more. Uh, one of the the uh, the things I love, though, about it is that each character really feels different when you're playing with them. Yeah, they definitely do. I mean, um, I go back to when I played as Johnny Retro earlier on. He he felt different to you know Nick Aldis when I yep. played as him. So it's it's really good to have that variation because with WrestleFest, um, I think a lot of the time it was literally sort of because obviously it was an arcade game. Right. It wasn't made for people to sort of rip and, and play at home. Right. But right. <laughs> you, you know, so you know, a lot of the time it was sort of wiggle the arcade stick. You've got three buttons. Do your worst type you got thing. Two. But, all right. Oh, yeah, two, yeah, too. yeah, that was the other one of the, the things we changed. Like, like you said, you can't just go in and do any move. WrestleFest kind of controlled what you did mm -hmm. and you had no control over it. You basically hit the punch button in the grapple and you did one of two moves until you worked up to medium. And then you did one of two moves at medium. Yeah. And then you worked up to your finisher and that was pretty much it. Um, so we put more control. You can actually pull off the strong moves, but it's very rare. You'll get lucky occasionally if you try to do it early in the match without any momentum. Yeah, I've had zero success with that so far. <laughs> uh big big stevie cool was just hitting me with the face buster every time i was looking for a strong move when i first started right. playing and i was like yeah this is this isn't working i'm definitely right. doing something <laughs> wrong here but um i love that i love being able to um, I, I love that you have to learn on the job and yep. I've not gone too deep with it. I want to, you know, venture to the outside of the ring and right. you know, go picking chairs up and stuff like that. I've been thrown out of the ring and I love, <laughs> I love the camera cut. So, yep. uh, so sort of when it zooms out and you yeah. get a bigger view, I really like that. I got counted yeah. out a couple of times because I couldn't figure out how to get back in the ring. Uh, just double tap, double yep. tap. <laughs> so one of the things in, uh, you know, we, we have uh, there's a pause menu, and if you go to controls, it has all the controls on the pause menu too. Um, that you can go. So we we played around with just pressing the button towards the ropes, and I think we just settled on double tap. We thought made the most sense, uh, but that's a common thing I, I had heard about as well. Yeah, um, to be honest, when I did pause it and go to the controls, it, it the, the announcer guy uh, is there, and it has like a like, yep. like a blurb basically saying yeah, double Ian tap. Riccoboni, yep. Yeah, and even then, I'm an idiot trying to press X to get back in the ring. I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pressing that way in X, but then I read it again. It was like, you have to double tap it, right. you clown. What are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, so it's all you know a big learning curve. But it's um, honestly, it's it's a what you've made here is um, a love letter to the wrestling games that you know I first started playing. Yep. You know, um, on the on the the SNES and the and the the Mega Drive or Genesis, as it's called in, yeah, in no, the States. I, I, I know um, what it's called in there, too. I'm good on Mega Drive. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, so it's, it's them kind of wrestling games. Then, of course, you know, you've got the you've got the WrestleFest stuff in there as well, and it, it really is sort of everything mixed into one, but also modern and fitting with current games as well. And it's a, it's a really unique and special package that I think you've put together. I appreciate that. That was the goal. You summed up the goal beautifully. Good. <laughs> Now, when we first spoke two years ago, um, <laughs> it was pretty much just the Road Warriors. And they were wrestling the guys in the purple tights. Yep. Who should definitely be unlockable characters if they're not. <laughs> the enhancement talent. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I know that you were excited at that point to have the Road Warriors, you know, because right. obviously they were such a focal point of WrestleFest. But now you've added all these other, you know, you've added all this other talent. You've got the, you know, the Blue World Order in there. You've got Dreamer in the House of Hardcore. You've got Matt Cardona. And, you know, it's how how did this grow from what it was two years ago to what it is now? What, what was the sort of process? Did you approach them? Did they approach you? I mean, how did you, the wrestling fan, come to, you know, mingle with all this, you know, wrestling talent? Right. Yeah, I mean, we approached everybody. I think later, once we had signed everybody, we started getting approached. Um, but at that point, you know, we already had our, our launch roster set. But, um, you know, it was introducing myself at a wrestling, a WrestleCade in New York. 
uh, in 2019 and then reaching out. And then uh, my business development manager, Mike Archer, who has a lot of industry experience, excuse me, a lot of industry experience, also worked for the WWE. He had a lot of contacts. He's friends with Dreamer. Um, so he was able to get in touch with Tommy and then Tommy helped us get in touch with, uh, J <coughs> excuse me, John Hennigan, Johnny Retro, as we call him. Yeah. Uh, we, we reached out to Matt and, uh, Matt Cardona and Brian Myers the day they were released from WWE. Cause we thought they were like the ideal fit for what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, I, I with totally their whole agree. wrestling figure, uh, podcast, major wrestling excuse me major wrestling league podcast and we were able to recreate a toy ring in there kind of in their style and they helped do all the signs in the backgrounds so they just happened to be a good fit we reached out to them they were on board you know i just sent an email to jeff cobb he was on board same with uh, zach saber jr i had one one phone call with him when he was in japan um he was super cool to deal with so kind of all just came together and we really had this really unique eclectic roster and it's kind of a little bit of everybody uh from the yeah. wrestling world thrown in there yeah definitely um it's cool that um myers and um cardona are in there and the ring you know as part of the arena or the two arenas they've got on there yep. um is the ring the first wrestling ring that i had when i was a kid <laughs> yep. the old, it was the old wwf style and uh the the title belt went around the the like the circle thing on the at the bottom of, but there was like a like a, a soundboard that you could plug in as well yep and yep. Uh, so it really that really takes me back and i think that's a, a really cool feature yeah, I mean, it was great. I mean, that's what we, uh, you know, that's what we were inspired by to uh, make that ring. So what what was everybody like to deal with? So, you know, we'll go we'll start with Dreamer because, you know, Tommy Dreamer, he seems like the nicest guy in the world. Oh, he's a pain in the ass. He we brought him out <laughs> to a convention. He asked me to take out all the green M&Ms from a bag. Oh, wow. Okay. I thought he was Van Halen. Donna. <laughs> now uh everybody's been awesome uh you know I, I have no bad words about anybody we've dealt with um everyone even some people we couldn't we couldn't come to agreement been nothing but professional uh through the whole thing so i really it's been a really good experience um getting everybody signed on board um you know so, some took a little longer than others but uh but in, overall i would say you know it was a great experience it's great that you've got so many arenas in there as well. I like the, you know, you've got the House of Hardcore in there and um, the ballroom. Is that supposed to be um, like the the one, the Hammerstein ballroom in New York? Possibly, you know, maybe Possibly. Inspired, inspired. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait yeah, we can't. We, inspired, yeah, it's, it's, it's a ballroom. Yeah, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I just, I just love all these little nods to, you know, wrestling throughout the years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, and in the story mode, once you play that, there's a tutorial also in the story mode that kind of goes through how the momentum works and how, when to do which moves, too. Uh, but in the story mode, we have some other guest appearances of the wrestling community as well. Not necessarily wrestlers, uh, but a couple other uh, famous faces make their way in there. And then, of course, you know, we've shown some of this, but we have the if you're familiar with Busted Open Radio, yeah. and Dave LaGreca, we have Dave LaGreca fatheads in the audience. <laughs> um which we were really happy i thought that would be a nice little touch and dave yeah, was that's all, cool. dave was super cool to to uh to uh be included uh so he let us use his likeness in there and they'll make an appearance in uh in the we have some dlc free dlc uh planned uh in the next couple months that uh adds the uh, busted open as part of the story chapter four or five of the story mode cool um speaking of dlc are you allowed to share any information yet, or are you going to keep us all guessing for a little while? <laughs> we're we're going to announce something soon um, with a couple guys. We have, you know, DLCB downloadable Chris Bay is coming uh, very soon. He's being worked on right now. Cool. Uh, so he's currently on Impact uh, Wrestling. And then we are, you know, we we haven't signed too many guys. We have a couple guys that we're going to announce, and then outside of that, we're going to circle back because we've. Like I said before, we've been approached now by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a couple different ways and a couple different options we can go. There's, It's a really hard decision because I want to add everybody. Um, but, you know, we're, we feel like we're so far, uh, just in the past week, we've started issuing um, 
steam keys out to people and yeah. reception has been very similar to what you're saying. So we're feeling really good about it, that the, that the game's going to do well and we'll be able to reinvest back into it. Yeah. So, I mean, you, do you, you have a long-term plan in place for retro mania wrestling. It's not just a sort of release a couple of DLC packs than done. Is it something you want to maintain? Uh, I would love to, yeah. I would love to maintain it and, and keep it growing going forward. I have a lot of, you know, I couldn't fit. I would have a laundry list of things I wanted to get in the game. Um, and we had at some point we had to kind of draw a line in the sand and we craw we scrubbed that out and went over it a couple times uh, and added some more stuff. But there's still a lot of stuff I would like to see in the game just from a fan standpoint. So sure, yeah. for, for you, those of you guys playing it, when you come, you know, it'd be this is great, but wouldn't it be cool if they did this? I'm thinking the same thing. So I would love to add some additional things in there as well. I like the fact that there's there's so much variety in what you can do in the game. Sometimes, you know, you put a lot of these games on because obviously with WrestleFest, it was just the Rumble and the arcade mode, pretty much. Right. But this, you you know, you've got a whole story mode. You've got the Templars of God, which um, is like the arcade mode. Right. Um, then you've got the Retro Rumble. But then, like, with the Versus mode, there's all these different options that you can have. So it's not just a simple one-on-one -on -one or a tag team. You know, it's yeah. one-on-one, -on -one, you know, cage, and there's so much stuff going on. It's the, the amount of options is, is actually, it's quite overwhelming to a degree. Yeah. A, in, yeah, a, in so, a good way. Yeah. So you got, you got your singles, your tag, six man tag, eight man tag. Uh, you got a three way match, four way match. And then with all of that, you can do elimination style, tornado style. You can set different, uh, how, how long the time limit is, how long the count out is. And then even in the retro rumble, you can set how many participants you want in and how often you want them to come out. Um, and, and a couple other things you can set cages if you want to play in a cage or not. And we really, you know, I would like to build to the point where then maybe we add build a card, you know, so you build your own wrestling card and you, we have okay. some type of ranking system. That's kind of my, um, one of the things I'm envisioning for this oh, okay. to add additional replayability with versus mode. So versus mode is great. And we have local multiplayer now. So that you can get a lot of time out of the current climate we're in kind of stinks because there isn't a ton of party events going on. And hopefully that's going to change real soon. The way things seem to be going now. Yeah. Fingers but, crossed. but we want, we want some more single player stuff in there as well. And, and try to uh, try to build that out. And then, you know, hopefully, you know, down the road, we, we look at, you know, online as well. A ranking system would be great. You know, like uh, yep. with, championship belts and stuff like that you know just just little things you know, just little things like that make the world of difference it doesn't have to be you know like grandiose or anything like that it literally just needs to, i remember the the nintendo 64 uh wwf games and it was literally as simple as creating a championship naming it whatever you want and then you wrestle your friends for it that was right. and that's what me and my friends did for the longest time yep and you can wrestle for the 10 pounds of gold right now in our game too so in go. versus mode, you can you can do that. You can trade the belt in versus mode uh, oh, okay. with your friends as well. Oh, that's great. That's really good. I haven't tried that yet. Too busy losing. Yeah. <laughs> another thing, uh, another thing that I really like is you know, the the wealth of uh, like options in terms of um, the matches, you, the the length of how you can make your matches, yep. and you know you can have like recovery and and stuff like that, like second wind. Yep. Uh, I really, I really like that because it gives you the option. Then, because you know, people, some people do like really short arcade type matches. Other people, you know, they they want to be in it for the long haul. They want to have these right. epics. And I, I like the fact that you've given us, um, you know, that that option to do that. Whether you, you know, with a, with like a, a simple slider, yep. how you how long or short you want your match. Yeah. When we were first starting to like show gameplay online, the matches were pretty quick to some people. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, I kind of like this, but I get where they're coming from, where you want a kind of a longer match. So that's when we added that slider, which basically reduces the amount of damage you do and the amount of momentum you gain. So it's a slower build to the match. And yeah, yeah. you can go in there and that slider, you know, you can use it in any mode in the game. So it affects the whole game overall. So you can kind of customize it to the feel that you want. And then same with Second Wind. Um, some people love it. Some people hated it in testing, I'll be honest with you, because I would be playing my son, and he would get mad because I would keep be beating me, and I'd kick out with a Second Wind and then beat him. And <laughs> um, I like it personally. You know, I, 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 I like it sometimes, and I turn it down a little bit, and I play with it a little bit. And then um, 
but yeah, we and then and then the audio options as well. Some people love commentary, some people don't. Some people want the music higher, some people want the effects higher. So we give yeah. we gave you guys sliding bars for all that stuff, so you can really play it how you want to play it. Yeah, and I, I th- again, I think that's something that's going to really appeal to people. Some people, you're right, you m- you might not want the commentary on. Um, some people will. Some people will just want music. I, I wish all wrestling games gave us that option because. You know, a lot of the times, and this isn't sort of, you know, saying this about your game, but commentary isn't the greatest. It doesn't come across the best in wrestling games, but that's wrestling games of all kinds, and it's always been the case. Right. Um, so some people just prefer to play with music. Right. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It was challenging to do. I mean, I love Ian and Ian Riccoboni and Cole Cabana did a phenomenal job. And yeah. we tried to, to balance out, you know, how much they say, because it's tough because – Let's say you spam a move, and we've done our best to balance a game so you can't spam too much. But if you do the yeah. same move, let's say three times in a row, uh, and so the commentator is probably going to keep on what move you're doing, and they're going to set, you know, and it gets repetitive. So we kind of change it up a little bit where our commentary doesn't necessarily hit on every move, and you can actually have a slider bar of how often you want to hear commentary or how seldom you want to hear it. So if you don't want it for every move, you can turn that bar down and it'll it'll occasionally say something versus, you know, every time where you can turn it up and do it that way. Yeah, and again, which is really good, I think. I mean, it, with this kind of game, you know, you can't really have, you know, hours and hours of commentary because it's right. so because it is a fast paced game yep you know you, you're not you're not slow burning with you know submission holds or right, right. you know rest holds or anything like that so you know the action is fast paced so i can imagine it's you know it's incredibly difficult to get that balance right of you know what the commentary says and when they say it right. um but so I, we, know, we left do... it up to you guys you guys will all handle that for us we gave there you we the go. ability to change it so that's it you see you don't yeah. like it just turn it off Yep. Perfect. So again, you know, it's been two years since we spoke. Yep. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, I always read the comments online and stuff like that. When anytime you guys post and people are like, this game's never coming out. <laughs> it's never coming out. Um, because, you know, like I said, at the beginning of the podcast, we, we you know, you're hoping to sort of get it out early 2020. Yeah. Um, what was the hold up? What, what is it that, kept holding the game back from releasing when you originally wanted to release it. I know obviously we've been in the midst of a global pandemic. Yeah, that had a little um, to do with it, but <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that's probably made you hit a stumbling block. But what was the what was the big thing? Was it was it a case of you wanting it to be the game that you know Yeah, you I mean it's it was really with? it was really on me. I mean I wasn't happy with things. I changed things. Um you know I learned a lot, you know, I think we talked about this before, but you know, this is my first delve into game development. I have a yeah. background in software engineering, but it's all, you know, business software. So um, that's kind of easier because you get a set thing of requirements that you have to meet and you have to do X, Y, and Z, and you can plan better to do X, Y, and Z. Um, where it's, where our, our approach, you know, in software development terms was very agile, where we would turn on a dime from one week to the next and i know my lead programmer would probably get frustrated with me but that was more the the art side of it for me was you know i i want it the way i want it you know what i mean and Mm -hmm. i'd be damned if we go take longer i i want it to come out this way i i have a a vision in my head i i did write a design document we did not stick with it completely um things came up after play testing as we play tested that we needed to change and um we took our time with it and i think you know we definitely had that release date out there and it was always estimated um i did obviously a year later it was not the not the plan we said i think our initial release date was first quarter 2020 that was the first yeah. thing we said out there and it, you know now we're first quarter 2021 but uh, a lot of things have, have happened in that in that year um and and you know we we're definitely slowed by the pandemic but not we were already all remote, so but people were definitely preoccupied with it. But I wouldn't blame it on that. You know, I would blame it more on my b- me being an artiste, huh? You know, so hey, um, if you want to, if you're a perfectionist, you're a perfectionist, right? You right. know, um, was there any pressure? You know, when you were sort of approaching the back end of 2019 and thinking, okay, we've said that you know we're going to get this out early 2020. 
did you feel any pressure at that point? Do you think you were, you know, going to get maybe backlash from angry yeah. internet people or anything like that? Or were you sort of, were you calm about it thinking, you know what, this will release when, you know, I want it to release or were you sort of wanting to get it over uh, the line quicker? Yeah. I mean, I definitely wanted to get it out. So I didn't really feel the pressure till we offered pre-orders because then I felt an obligation to people. They were willing to invest their hard earned money into this game and now I'm making them wait. You know, that was my really only, you know, social media is social media. Um, yeah. I would say 95% of the comments we get are good, but 5% Absolutely, are bad. Yeah. And those are the ones you kind of focus on, you know, and you know it too. You'll read a review of your podcast and, yeah. and you'll get a lot of good feedback, but you kind of fixate on the one bad thing somebody says, you know, yeah, it, of it course. sucks. And you don't want to read that. It sucks to your ego. You know, it deflates your ego. Uh, you're trying to do something good. You're making a video game. You're trying to give some enjoyment to people. And then yeah. people, you kind of feel like a, you t feel like it's a slap in the face that, you know, they're not validating what you think is good or whatnot. So you, you feel a little pressure. You try, I think I've gotten better at trying to ignore the bad and just go with the good. Yeah. But I definitely felt the pressure to the people that have been patient with us for pre-orders. Once you take someone's money for it, that's when I felt I got to get this done. I got to do those people right. And I think we have. I think it'll be worth the wait for them. I think, you know, you're getting a great game uh, that you're going to get countless hours of enjoyment out of. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, there's no two ways that people are going to get countless hours of enjoyment out of it. I mean, do, do you think do you think you jumped the gun with pre-orders? Yeah, I think in hindsight, you know, when we started pre-orders, we thought we were about five, six months out. Um, but again, we did that. I will blame a little bit on the pandemic because we had net, we did pre-orders like two weeks before that all hit. So that was really our slowdown time, um, where we just didn't meet our goals. But so in hindsight, yeah, I probably would have planned a little better and waited a little bit longer, um, until we, we were a little more, you know, but at the time I was really comfortable with July, um, being the release date, you know, I was really comfortable. Yeah. I thought, ugh. Six months, but then you know we 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 came and you know I wasn't happy with the menus. We redesigned okay. all the menus. I wasn't happy with the sound. You know we re, somebody redid all the sound. You know, and I'll tell you the 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 comment that kind of summarizes our last three months. Uh, somebody uh, watched a video and it's like, what a difference a week makes, and it was longer <laughs> than a week, but they were right. You know, the last five percent is like ninety five percent of the work. You know, that's where all the polish went in. Um, the, the guys on my team, Corey and Zach, who redid the menus and it makes it look like a triple a game, you know, it, it, it is quality through and through the, the mm -hmm. our soundtrack is super awesome. I love our soundtrack, Danimal cannon look him up. He, uh, he's done a lot of good work in the past and he really knocked it out of the park. Um, and rhythm bastard contributed to that as well to some of the other sounds, sound work in the game. Um, but, but. Dan really just killed it. He just killed it. Um, so, uh, and then our animators and we redid some animations that we weren't happy with. So it was just a lot of little tweaking uh, in the last couple months to really get this thing over the finish line. And I can tell you that it's worth the wait. I mean, we always say it on this podcast, uh, you know, when if a, if a game gets delayed, you, you know, you will always see that negativity. But I, that's not... I don't think that's, you know, a knock on the people making the game. I think it's more of a, a disappointed reaction more than anything else. So it's not a reflection yeah, on, right. I was disappointed when yeah. it was delayed. I was super disappointed. So I, you know, yep. I was really looking forward to it. And, you know, originally it was supposed to be early 2020 and, you know, then it wasn't, then it was right. supposed to be mid 2020 and it wasn't. I was like, oh man, I, you know, but you know, you always have that. Okay, Retromania but, forever. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but you're, you're always, it's always going to be worth it in the end because it's obviously delayed for a reason. It's, right. it's obviously delayed because it isn't ready to go. You know, you don't yeah. want to put a load of, you know, a, something out just because people are pressuring you right. to get it out there. You want to put put out because this to you, like you said to me, when we first, when we first spoke, you know, this is a labor of love for you. Yep, this isn't, absolutely. this is a, a love letter to the game that you loved and still love now. So you know, for you, this is, this is about putting out uh, a project. Absolutely. And yeah, and, and we've learned, there's a couple lessons that we've learned over, you know, since we started development, not to repeat from other companies, you know? So, um, 
it, it's it's luckily we didn't have stockholders and this huge marketing budget and planned out marketing you know globally millions of dollars which makes it a lot harder to push your release date right mm. uh luckily we didn't have that so i really sympathize for those companies that did have stuff like that because it's hard to stop that that uh machine in motion we're a much 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 smaller team you know basically two programmers did did the entire game uh we had help from maybe four other programmers uh at ancillary positions but two guys really did the majority of the work on this. So uh, we don't have a huge team and then we have a bunch of artists that helped out as well. But, um, you know, it was easy for me to be like, yeah, people are going to be disappointed, but they will be more disappointed if we push out a crappy game. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and agree, then yeah. it's, it's going to be really, really hard to win those people back once we set that first impression and be bad. So we thought, Let's let's delay it and get it right, and I think we'll be easily forgiven for the delay once once people start playing it. Definitely. So the game releases on Steam in just a couple of days' time. Um, yeah. you know, and like I've been playing it on Steam, and I must say it's it's super smooth as well. It's so quick, like from menu to match is is real real quick. Yep. Yeah, well, it was great. very important to get loading times down. Um, even on the Switch, uh, the Switch version, it's very. We have. We have a little thing in the bottom left corner that says loading, but you barely see it. You barely see it. Hmm. I think that's the version that I'm most excited for. I know it doesn't have trophies or achievements and stuff like that, but I think just to be able to carry it around and pick up and play it whenever. Yeah, it's good. I enjoy it too because I'll do testing on my development version and I will, uh, I'll go on the couch in the living room and just sit down and play it there. It is, it is a lot of fun. I do. I'll tell you though, I wasn't a big trophy guy. Uh, before, but I do love unlocking the trophies on Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. Uh, it's a lot of fun going through those. Yeah, I think because uh, yeah, I've got some of the achievements on Steam already. Yep. Yeah, we um, have thirty nine of them. Yeah, so um, I am a, a bit of a, an achievement guy on Xbox. So um, I'm hoping at some point to to get hold of the Xbox version and probably go for the thousand gamer score <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yep. So this whole two years has been just a massive whirlwind for you. It's, you know, I'm going to take, you know, the full credit for making, you know, the game so popular when we did first did the podcast two years ago. I think you might have been the first one I did. (laughs) I think, I think so. Yeah. I think, um, because I think we, we sort of caught wind of this real early and then um, touched base with you and you were happy to come on and talk about it. And yeah, I think, obviously i'm not taking the credit i'm joking but no, you know it's really blown up and it's gone you know it's, it's turned into this sort of global thing now and yeah, people amazing. are people are very excited and it you know that's got to it's got to feel so good for you seeing people so excited for something that you've created something that's your brainchild and you know something that's your baby essentially you know it's- yeah absolutely i mean we we you know we started out with zero followers on all social media yeah. Um. And Mike T on my uh, marketing, who does our helps me with the the PR and the marketing. He he put a plan in place, and the two of us executed. He did a lot more work of it than I did, but you know, I I'm I'm on there answering tweets, answering, uh, you know, uh, comments and all that as well. But he put a plan in, and it just I'll tell you, I thought we were gonna have an audience. I didn't think it would grow this big this quickly. So I'm I'm super excited about that. Yeah, I, th- I think what's what's great as well is that you do reply to people who do tweet you. And I think that's really important in social media because, you know, if you tweet, you know, other game developers, you know, other people making games, they don't they don't get back to you. They just sort of you might you might get a like, maybe, right. <laughs> you know, but at least, you know, you guys will reply with a cool wrestling gif or, you know, at least something. We and, try. And, we try. And that does mean a lot to people, yeah. like more we than absolutely- more than you probably know. No, I mean, I, I because I'm on the other end of that too. This is the first game I've made, so I, I always, you always appreciate someone acknowledging you're taking the time to put a comment down, them acknowledging they received it and read it. You know, that's that's what you want to see. So, uh, for sure, and we we try to. I answer every email we get, um, nonstop. We we were answering every single comment, but it just got. We were only two of us, so yeah. we we we've gotten so many more now. We don't answer every single one, but we answer as many as we can. Another thing that I think um, has done you uh, has done really good for you is the developers blog. 
Yeah. Um, how did that come about? Is that something you just thought, you know, if if the if if things are going to get delayed, we want to be able to, you know, give people the reasons why in more than just a yeah. you know a tweet or something. Well, I think people were really we were gaining this momentum on 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 Twitter and Facebook, and I thought we don't really have much presence on YouTube. Um, at the time, we still had the you know the enhancement talent in the game. But I thought, you know, people seem to be liking following along our updates. I go, well, let's, why don't we, we want to grow our YouTube presence as another form to market the game. Cause eventually we knew we were going to have really good gameplay stuff to show. Uh, so I, so I think Mike said, you, if you could do, you know, a video or two a week. So initially we had a, a developer's vlog and then another video. I was doing two a week for a couple months and it just got overwhelming with how much, uh, uh, other stuff we had to focus on the game. So we just cut it down to one developer's log. We've, we moved the dates around. Now we're on Mondays. And I just thought, you know, people, especially when people, once people pre-order, I wanted to make sure everyone stayed up to date with where we were at. Because one of the things you see, and we had we had looked at doing a Kickstarter early on, and I didn't decided I didn't want to do it because it would just be one more thing we have to manage. But yeah. people... The, the bad Kickstarters go dark on you. They get the money and then they go dark. They, you don't hear anything or you get occasionally an update, a uh, text update or something like that. And I, I just yeah. wanted to make sure that everyone who everyone who pre-ordered knew exactly what we were doing. We showed progress every week. So they were never in their head, man, that was a waste of 25 bucks. You know, I, I, I'm very conscious of that. And I wanted to make sure people knew exactly where we were at the process and even if we had delays, they could understand why we delayed and when they were going to get the game. And I, th- I think it's a good thing, you know. C- people do appreciate being kept, you know, kept in the loop, especially. Right. And I think you've made it a, a real community type game. You know, I think everybody yep. who buys this game is going to be, you know, really enjoying it. You know, when when they do get to when they do get to play it, whether it be on Steam or whether it be eventually on console, it's. Um, yeah, I think you've built a real community around this and that you should be seriously proud of yourself for right, it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Now, before I take up any more of your time, I want to talk about that sexy beast in the background there. <laughs> you've got to be super proud of that, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, the I Arcade is the, the platform uh, that we're, we're talking about. So Jung uh, reached out to us and said they wanted to get Retromania on the iArcade platform. For those of you not familiar with it, it's like another console, just a lot bigger looking. Uh, yeah. Um, and and they have their own store where they have licensed games that you can purchase through their store. It comes preloaded with, I think, 11 or 12 games. Mm-hmm. So um, they wanted us to get on their store. So we talked about it, and we negotiated, and we, we agreed to it. And I kind of said in joking, uh, now I want some free advertising. I want you guys to put us on one of the one of the the arcade units because they have multiple models. There's a a Dragon's Lair version of it, a Double Dragon. Then they have their standard I arcade version, and they're like, "Okay, we'll do that. We'll do advertising for you." And then they came out with this, and I'm like, "Oh, you got to be kidding me!" You know. So I was so excited when they showed me renders of it, and I thought they were still joking. And they're <laughs> like, "No," and I go, "What a great way to market the game uh, because." You know, we are the sequel to WrestleFest. That was an arcade machine. And then to see it being played on on, on a Retromania arcade machine is just so cool. That's got to be this this whole thing come full circle for you. Oh, yeah. It, <laughs> it's just amazing. It blew me away. It yeah. Blew to, me away. To, you know, from being a fan of WrestleFest, you know, back in the day to now having your own, you know, arcade cabinet with a game that you've created. Right. I mean... I can see the smile on your face now. I mean, you've got to be so proud of that. I mean, that's, yeah, it's surreal. It's surreal. It's it's so cool. Like it's really cool. If I had a spare eight hundred dollars, I'd probably I'd, I'd, I'd buy one myself. I'm not sure the wife will let me though. <laughs> well, it's funny because a friend of mine texted me uh, yesterday. Oh, I'm proud you're releasing this game because and this guy's the one who we used to. I went to a, uh, a Catholic school. He went to public school. And uh, I had a lot more days off than he did. So whenever I had a day off, he would skip school. And we would drive <laughs> to a, a shopping mall where they had an arcade. And we'd, we'd play uh, WrestleFest for a couple hours. You know, we'd play that. And we'd play X-Men, uh, the arcade game. The great game. X-Men oh, six, great game. Six-player game. We'd play those two games. Uh, we'd play for an hour, go eat at the food court, and then come back and play for another hour. 
uh, before we left. And we did that quite frequently, uh, you know, our uh, junior and senior years of, of uh, high school. And, um, you know, he, he sent that text. He's like, I can't believe you really did it, you know, because we, we talked about, you know, uh, buying a WrestleFest cabinet when we were younger and we couldn't afford it. And then fast forward 30 years and here we are. Wow. That, that is, it's absolutely amazing. It really is. Um, one final thing. So obviously at the minute, there's a, an issue with the console release, but not too big an issue and it's no. coming real soon, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going through the certification process. We had a couple issues come up through that, um, that we didn't account for, hence the delay. So, uh, nothing, nothing, you know show stopping or earth shattering like i said i've played on all of them and it plays great it's just stuff that came up in the certification process so we just have to address it and then you know reissue and which we've already done i think on all of them so we're just waiting to hear back so um it should be you know i'm hoping no more than two weeks and i'm hoping a lot less than that but yeah. I, I think i think two weeks is a safe bet like i said the game i've been playing it on these consoles for you know a month or more now so I'm, there shouldn't be too worried about any any huge delays there. It's just kind of a little one last bump in the road, which uh, I guess is par for the course. Absolutely. I don't think it'd be Retromania Wrestling without that little <laughs> bump in the road at this point. Right, right. <laughs> well, Mike, it's honestly amazing to be having this chat with you two years on um, and seeing where the game started and now speaking to you just as the game is about to release, it's been an incredible two years. You should be incredibly proud of what you've done and what you've put together, you and your team. It's it's really it really is an amazing game. And I I, I you know I, I like I said I've been playing it and I can't wait to play it on console. And um, everybody you know who listens to this, uh, you know I think you are really going to enjoy retro mania wrestling it's a, a love letter to the old school with a little bit of a new school feel as well and i think mike you should be very proud of yourself thank you very much Sonny. i appreciate it and i appreciate you taking the time to speak with me after two years <laughs> talk to you I... in another two years retro mania too <laughs> <laughs> don't don't announce it no that's it now you've done it so uh, as soon as <laughs> The comments are going to be like Retromania 2, when? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thank you so much. And, um, you know, I wish you all the success in the world with Retromania Wrestling. Congratulations on finally getting it released on Steam. And it's coming to Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PS4. But you will be able to play it as part of Backwards Compatible on new consoles also. Yeah, we're actually... Um, our game engine that we use, actually, I know we're at the tail end of this, but... Uh, they just uh, started supporting Series X and then PS5, so we should have it available on those consoles natively as well. There we go. Because 4K 60 FPS sprites. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all need. That's what we all That's need. That's exactly what we all need. Ray tracing <laughs> on the uh, re- on the <laughs> wrestling figure podcast. Yeah. Good times. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and also, if you've got a load of money, buy the iArcade as well because it looks awesome. <laughs> Mike, thank you very much. Everybody, don't forget to check out the latest episodes of the Great Games and Graps podcast every week on all of your favorite podcast services and our YouTube channel and Facebook and anywhere else that things happen and people listen to stuff. But uh, my name's Sonny, and I have been with Retrosoft's Mike Herman. Mike, thank you once again, and we'll see you next time, guys. Take it easy. Goodbye. Take care.